Come hear me, little Jackie. No, I've smoked me bucky. Have a bit of cracky till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy. Dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Nothing on her at all. Hey, not canny, Ben. Cheers, Jack. Sid, have been well. Um, how are you doing? Canny, canny. Sit down, it must be nigh on a year. Thirteen months. Get that down, you Jack. Uh, it's kind of you said, but I'm a bit short just now. Still out of work? Aye. Wait, did I see you had to buy his one back? Oh, did I? Well, thanks, lad. You bought me a canny few in your time. Anyway, I can afford it. What mob are you with now, then? Never seen the Black and Tans before? No, never. I've read about it, mine. Read? What you read? Having a bit of trouble in Ireland, aren't you? Oh, now we can it handle, Jack. Good lad. We've got all sorts down there. Jocks, Greenhowards, lads from our own lot. Just like the war. <laughs> Is it? Except for pay. Ten bob a day, lad. How much? Ten bob a day. And I'm only a squatty. Ten bob a day, man. That's good, you know. Look, I better be off. I've got the wife waiting for me. Oh, eh? Married that school teacher, did you? No. No, I didn't. But I got married. You home for long? Seven days. Drop in any time, Jack. I'll probably be here. Good Tom. Mr. Seaton. Jack. I'm not talking to you. Mary. I'm sorry, lad. You are a good friend, Jack. Well, that phony kid and bastard to go to hell. I want a bloody drink. This night of all nights. I know, ma'am. Trips off to the pub like that. Make now a Tom take him. Where'd our Tom get the money from? I'd like to know. I gave it to him. You did what? Shh. You make the burn. Of course I gave it to him. His wife just passed away and you sent him off to the pub. He needed a drink, ma'am. Our Tom never was much good without a drink inside him. Not to say I couldn't do with one myself. But not in the pub. There's such a thing as decency, Jesse. Hey, does not the mean of the word. It was good to me, Doc. And Mary. Aye, money. Just like that's always flush. Easy come, easy go. Didn't look any too flush the night. No, he wasn't, would he? I mean, he's married now. Go on to set up. The burn on the way. <laughs> serve the bugger right. I was married, Doc. And I've got a burn. Does it serve me right and all? What are you getting all there? Touch your boat. Hey, you clumsy git. Sorry, Granddad. So you should be, you clumsy git git. I'll buy you another. Give the Kaiser another beer, will you? Aye. Have you any Irish whiskey? No. Got two large whiskeys, then. What a hole. Can't even get any Irish whiskey. Never cared much for it myself. Ah, there was a time I couldn't have lasted without it. Hey, hurry up with that whiskey, will you? Right. Have one yourself. Oh, thanks. What's the matter with you? Are you bloody paddy then, is that it? No, that's for you I drink with. Behave yourself, for God's sake. You're not in court now. Pity. Wouldn't mind interrogating that one. Pity, is it? We nearly died, the pair of us. What do you expect when there's a war on? But we lived and all did it, didn't we? Eh? <laughs> We're the bosses there, aren't we? Whiskey and steaks and cars to ride in. And the natives doing what we tell them. Aye, when they weren't trying to kill us. Oh, come on, man. The time of our lives. What about the women? I never saw a willing one yet. Willing? You only had to pull in the husband and the wife would do what you like. You could be more obliging, man. Hey, I remember one time in Kinsale. <laughs> that half lasted a long time. Oh, we bought one. Oh, so you've come down to that, have you? The great Jack Ford, Cadge and Drinks. A mate of mine, we're in the army together. You remember Sid Upburn? Sid. Oh, aye, doing all right, is he? Seems to be. Well, you timed that one nicely, didn't you? Just in time for knocking off. What are you reading? Uncle Tom's captain. Sort of a story, isn't it? The way things are now, it's more like my autobiography. You don't want to take no notice of Dolly? Don't, do I'm married now. Huh? Oh, what I mean with a burn on the way, and that wouldn't get a bit touchy. Uh, I don't suppose I'm any too easy myself at the moment. Well, she's my own sister, and you're the best friend I've ever had. I don't want... 
Heavy reading by the look of it. Broadens the mind, Matt. Getting yourself an education, are you? That's right. Aye, well, no, why don't we? Because you can't go running after school teachers if you haven't got an education. I don't go running after school teachers. No? Well, mind you don't. Dolly, for God's sake. You keep out of this, all, Matt. I better go. You'll have your tea. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you. I say she's not. Be reasonable, father. Me be reasonable? What about her? Trying to bring up a bear at her age? Where's the bloody money coming from and all? After an hour. sleep. I'll not be for long if you keep yelling like that. You've got no business to be sleeping here. Of course he has. It's his home. Aye. Uh, well, we'll see about that. What's up with you? There's not over me. But he cannot stop here. Get on, grandson. The only grand bairn you've got. Of course he can sleep here. And I say he cannot. How many drinks did you give him? Do you know what the doctor said? Fine, that's all. Chop in the pub, bought him another one. What chop in the pub? Oh, uh, bloke in uniform, clumsy bug. He nearly had me over. Uniform? Aye, oh, black and tan. There were two of them there. Murdering swine. No, you watch your language. You pay for what he spilled. Never mind about that. I want to know about our Tommy. There's nothing to know. He's not stopping here. Why not? Because... Because I'll say so. Thinks it'll be too much for you, ma'am. Oh, he does, does he? I'll tell you what I think. I think he's too selfish to care what happens to anybody but himself. Not even his own grandbairn, his own son. Hey, I'm supposed to be invisible or something. Oh, Tom Pedder. You wouldn't think I was here listening, would you? You wouldn't even think I had a say. Well, you have, Tom. I have. It's my bairn and it's my wife that died. My wife. She loved our Tommy. And so do I. And nobody's going to play passing the parcel with them. Tell us what you want, Tom. I want? I want Mary back. That's what I want. We don't get what we want in this world, Jesse. You should know that. That's what we can have. That's what we're allowed. My mum says I can let Tommy stay here without it suit me fine. He'd have a home and a woman look after him. A woman that loves him. Da says he cannot have that. If Da says it, then he cannot. Because Da's the gaffer, aren't you, Da? That's right. So Tommy cannot stay. Tom! I'm not leaving him here with a rope in a tug of war. Mind if I ask you a question, Dor? Ask away, son. If he cannot stay here, where the hell can he stay? Ben bought this for you. What Ben? Well, how the hell would I know? A ben from the school, was it? And before you start, it's not from Jesse Seaton. Well, who's it from then? That fellow Manners. He's never offering you that job back, is he? No, he's not. He's offering me a drink tomorrow night at the station hotel. Oh, you better get your best suit on then. I'd better. Nothing said Hepburn might want to buy me a drink and all. What's Sid Hepburn up to then? Black and tans. Is that the ones that's fighting the Irish? Like they don't want to obey our king anymore? Like they don't want to obey any bugger anymore. They're dead against law and order over there. You remember the last time we were hungry, Matt? I remember. It was you and me and Charlie Stobbs and Paddy Boyle and we made up our minds, didn't we? Come what may, we said that we're not going to starve. And we didn't. We didn't take much notice of law and order though, did we? Well, that was different. When it's for yourself, it always is, bunny lad. What's this Sid Hepburn fella doing back here anyway? Shouldn't he be fighting the Irish? Well, leave, is he? So he says. Well, what else will be up to? Give us a chance I'll find out. Sounds as if you don't like him. Oh, he's all right. He's fighting for his country. Sid Hepburn the Patriot. He's got a better incentive than that. I wish you wouldn't use them long words. School teacher's words. What are you on about, Jack? Three pound ten a week. You're kidding. Three pound ten a week just for being the bloody army? That's right. Just lead me to it. Maybe that's what Sid Hepburn's after. You talk to him? Aye. Have a drop of Irish whiskey. So. Well, man, what did he say? Captain Leslie says we're a couple of stupid, ignorant swine. He's a hard one, all right. He says the only reason he sent us to is the rest are even thicker than we are. Well, it's true, isn't it? He also says that if we can find him three good men, real men, he'll give us a fiver apiece for them. That's good money. He said I didn't want it. Don't talk so bloody daft, man. He said I wanted me discharged. <laughs> oh, fat chance. And Captain Leslie says if I can find him the right replacements, I can have it. Harry, did you ever hear of a fella called Judas? Yeah, I don't know what got into me. Don't you? Oh, give over. No, I mean talking to you like that, Jack. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Forget it. It's just her, like, that Jessie. All that education, books and that. Me never more than a parlour maid. Maybe I like parlour maids. Do you, Jack? Do you? Honestly. A married one. Mm, go easy, Jack. 
Like a baby. Nubbies. What? If we're careful. You wouldn't hurt us, Jack, would you? Did I ever? What's it happened, sir? What about him? Not three pound ten a week. Would it be all found? We'd have his kit and rations on top, eh? Seems an awful lot of money, Jack. I was thinking that myself. Two of them, you say? That's right. One of them a big fella. Any marks on him? Well, he had a scar on his face, like it could have been done with a knife. It was. Did you see where they went? No, no, no. I left it for them. I mean, the way the big bloke was going on, man, I couldn't stand it. You should force yourself, Paddy. Sit there and smile, and save it all up for later. Could you find out where they are? No, no, I doubt it. I mean, not unless they were still in uniform. They won't be. Not if they've any sense at all, and they usually have some. But we need them, Paddy. Sinn Féin needs them bad. Couldn't you find them? With my accent. People are on to me in no time. Oh, even so. They know me, Paddy. They've interrogated me. They know me all right. I'm sorry, Michael. I've never done anything like this before, you see. I mean, I don't... You don't want to get mixed up in it. But you are mixed up in it. Joined up. Signed on. Sworn in. Listen, Paddy. Let me tell you what these two have done. Arson, Paddy. And murder. And rape. Round Cope, you said. That's right. You've run it as yourself there, haven't you? Aye. Aye, I have. He was talking to a mate of mine. Who barts on the big fella? No, no, no. The other one. The quiet one. But it's still a lead. It is. It is indeed. But you be careful now. I'd better be. What will you do with them? Arson. Murder. And rape. Murder's a capital offence, Paddy. They'll die. Oh, uh, so you're here. Just popped in to tell Mum about the funeral. It's tomorrow, if you're interested. Eleven o'clock at the chapel. So how could I get to the chapel in my condition? You managed to get to the pub. Anyway, somebody's got to mind the shop. You'll be going? Certainly. It was a good lass, was Mary. And she left a good burn. Aye. Well, I've been thinking about that. We'll give it a trial. Best I can do, mind. I'm promising now. How long? A week. A week? Well, you don't believe in putting yourself out, do you, Dad? Uh, I just have to wait and see. Have you warned everybody about the funeral? I think so, I. Except I was wondering, uh, Jack Ford. Oh? It was good to marry, Mum. I wouldn't have that phony kid and get in the house. Wouldn't be in your house. Hey, Jesse, is it turned 12 already? How do you do, Mr. Ashton? How do you do? Jesse shouldn't be bringing you in here, only, well, you know, the front rooms are shut now, you see. Not at all, Mrs. Seaton. I'm one of the family, after all. Mm -hmm. But I will be soon. I just popped in to offer my sympathy. Words are never any good, are they? I've been through it, and I know. But they're all we've got, I'm afraid. You have my sympathy, Tom, I assure you. Thanks, Mr. Ashton. Mr. Ashton. You won't let me forget I'm a headmaster, will you? I'm sorry, I didn't... That's all right. At a time like this, as I say, I know how it is. If there's anything that Jesse and I can do, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks. I won't keep you from your lunch. Good afternoon, Mrs. Seaton. Afternoon, Mr. Ashton. Mr. Seaton. Lunch. Bloody Nancy. Oh, that damn shop. No peace. 
no peace at all. What are you talking about just now? Hey, I cannot remember what we're talking about. So many people. All fornicating gets. Jesse! I never used to have language like that in this house. Not till, Not till Dad had his accident. We all have to suffer for that, don't we? You haven't answered my question. Who was the gentleman Dad was talking about? It was Jack Ford. I thought it might be. He was a good friend of Mary, Jess. Aye, he was. Money for eggs and milk when I had not. It's always there. He's a generous man. I've never said otherwise. I think I ought to ask him to the funeral. Well, you must do what you think best, Tom. But if he goes, I won't. Jess, he's right, Tom. Brother! Oh. Hey, brother! Mum's got it all wrong. I'm not being proud, honestly. But I'm not starting a feud either. It's just I couldn't bear to be in the same room with him ever again. Sit down, Paddy. Make yourself at home. Home? We've been in the dugouts over better than this. You don't mind if I get on with the painting, do you? Oh, no, no, no. You just go ahead. Is that what I can do for you? No. I just thought we might have a bit crack like. All right. Then fancy a bit more sheep stealing, do you? So I've got responsibilities now, Paddy. I'm a married man. Family man. No, no, no. Not like that. It was just the other night, like, I got to think then. You know, about the old times, about the chaps and bait company. Oh, aye. Aye. Got to wondering what on earth had happened to them all. Private boy, there's something on your mind. Oh, lay off now, Jack. You're not me sergeant now. There's no harm in trying. B Company, you said. Around here, there were five of us in B Company. Charlie Stobbs, Matt Headley, Paddy Ball, Sid Hepburn and me. I'm still here and you're still here. So is Matt. He was the best man at my wedding and so is Charlie Stobbs. You and him and Matt and me used to go sheep stealing together. So that leaves Sid Hepburn, Paddy. What are you so keen on remembering him for? Oh, just old times, like. I thought if he was around, I wouldn't mind having a drink with him. Well, he's not around, is he? Isn't he? Not that I know of. I heard you had a drink with him last night. Oh, aye. Well, I mean, you're old mates. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a drink with him. Stay out of it, Paddy. I don't know what you're on about, Jack. Sinn Féin, is that it? Honestly, Jack, I haven't seen only... Sid Hepburn, and I'm not going to see Sid Hepburn, all right? All right, Jack. You say so. I am saying so. Don't come the old soldier, Paddy, not with your own sergeant. Hey, Jack, I'm sorry I've been that. Oh, you know you had company. Dolly, this is Paddy Boyle. We were in the army together. Paddy, this is my wife, Dolly. He's come round to give us a hand with the painting. Haven't you, Paddy? This man, Ford. I'm in touch with the war office. Yes, sir. Quite a bright chap, it appears. Yes, sir. Good with malingerers. You were soft. What do you know? You weren't in his platoon. The whole bloody battalion knew. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Beg your pardon. You appear to have known two different people. How is he soft? Well, there wasn't half the charges in his platoon, sir. There wasn't the others. Live and let live. That was his motto. I see. Wait outside a minute, will you, Bartram? Sir! Was he soft? He was the hardest of the lot, sir. Go on. Do your job. There was no trouble. Cross him, and he'd destroy you. How was he on liars? Deadly, sir. Found you out, did he? Not me, sir. I wouldn't try it on with Sergeant Ford. Indeed. I want him, Hepburn. Get him for me and your discharge will go straight through. Oh, Tom, missus. Bye. Gives you a thirst, this painting. I'm sorry, I haven't got the money for a couple of pints, buddy. Aye, me and all. That's Sid Hepburn. He seemed to have plenty of money. What's Sid Hepburn? That fellow you were with last night. The only Sid Hepburn I ever knew was in B Company, same as Paddy. What you said last oh, night. Sometimes I say a lot more than I mean, Bonnie Lass, especially when I've had a few. Now, who could that be? You sure you haven't seen him? That's right. I saw him. In a uniform. Talking to you. Get off me back, Paddy. I mean it. There's a chap wants to see you. Can't he walk in then? It's Tom Seaton. Oh. How are you in, Tom? I haven't bitten anybody this week. Hello, Jack. Well, come in, Tom. You remember Paddy? Oh, why? How are you, Paddy, lad? Oh, I'm all right. Have you had a bit of trouble? My wife died yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, lad. I wanted to wait with you last night, Jack, but uh, had me down with me. Oh, I remember. Anyway, I could see you were busy with that black and tan. Oh, is that what he was? I thought he was a tram conductor. Kept asking me what I was reading. Funny lad. Never seen him before in my life. Aye. Aye. Well, I think I'd better be off. Aye. Suit yourself, Paddy. If you should see that fellow we were talking about, Jack, you should run across him, like. There could be a bit of money in it for you, you know. Well, I'll go to hell. Whoever thought I'd see a yellow streak on Paddy Boyle? Yeah, I'll get some tips. No, pet. Paddy's got to go, haven't you, Paddy? Aye, right, it was meant to be. How would I can do for you, Tom? I would like a word in private. You're in private now, lad. You might as well get on with it. I'll only tell her anyway. Well, I tried to tell you last night, but 
me down. Don't let it bother you. I've been called worse. I owe you a debt, Jack. I won't forget it. What debt? My wife. He helped us when we had not. She was a fine woman, Tom. Oh, she was. I still owe you a debt. I wanted to ask you to the funeral. Family problems? Aye, family. It's a bit difficult to explain. That's me. It's impossible. I wouldn't bother trying. I just want you to know I haven't forgotten. I never will. I'd better go. How are you managing? I'll be all right. Are you sure? I remember what you taught us, Jack. I can do what they like. Me and mine won't starve. So long. I'll see myself out. So long, Tom. How much does he owe you, then? Jack, how much does he owe you? You're not very bright, are you, Dolly? I'm bright enough to know he should pay his debts if he's flush. And how the hell can he be flush? You're bright enough to know that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. You're not angry with us, are you, Jack? We captured a trench once, 1917 that would be, Cambria it was. One of the German officers had a dog, little fox terrier, a little fellow, we all liked him. Trouble was, he never learned to understand English. I never got angry with him. It's been quite a day. It has. I meant what I said to your brother, you know, I do know what it's like. I also know that life goes on, and I'm grateful for it. Thanks, Arthur. This will affect our wedding plans, won't it? My father's none too pleased about that. Your father? Since the accident, he's been, well, difficult. It's been terrible for him, being crippled. It's none too easy for us, either. I wish we could get married now. So do I. You know I do. But we can't, can we? No. We can't. That doesn't stop you from kissing me. I was wondering if you'd be here. Why are you now? You know, it doesn't seem right seeing you sitting there with a half in your hand. Let us get you a whiskey. All right. Two large whiskies, please. Not like you to be drinking a jill. Better than dying of thirst. Not much, though. <laughs> Making it last all night with a book for a chaser. Thanks, have one yourself. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Ah, uh, oh, that'll be two bob. Well. Cheers. Go on, man, drink up. There's plenty more where that came from. Private Hepburn, there's something on your mind. <laughs> your skin, Jack. I am. You could be making more than me. Doing your job. Bossing my job. Twelve bob a day, plus kit, rations, allowances. What do you say? I was overseas. Not in Ireland, it's not. I think you're scared, Sid. I'm all right. Money in the bank, Jack, that's not to be scared of. Look, there's a bloke wants to speak to you. What bloke? Our CEO, Captain Leslie. We're putting up at the station hotel. He can explain it all much better than I can. It wouldn't hurt just to have a word with him. Have you asked him yet? Aye. Well? Well, what? I'm thinking about it. Thinking about it? He'll manage the chance of a lifetime. Well, like you say, there's no harm in talking. I've got to go over there to see a fella. Let's go and talk. Don't talk, Duff. Don't talk, will you? You've been out there too long, old son. Don't talk. Give us a light, will you, Harry? Other side of the road, three houses down. Got it? All right. Thanks, Harry. Just keep quiet, Jack. That's all I'm asking.
Evening. Looking for somebody? No. No? I was just on my way home. Well, you better get off then. Oh. Bloody Irish liar. Keep up this fart. You haven't joined yet, you know. Don't talk daft. I know this lad is no more Irish than I am. I wouldn't say that, Jack. I know him and all. His name's Paddy Boyle. You are right then, Sid. I had get. <coughs> Would you say I was correct for your kind of work, Sid? I tell you he was following us. Well, he's not following us now. Let's get on. You're right, bunny lad. I did my best, Mary. You know I did. I'm only sorry it wasn't good enough. But I'll look after our Tommy. I swear I will. He won't starve, Mary lass. And he won't have charity either. Oh, Mary. Mary. What the devil do you think you're playing at? Beg pardon, sir? Don't try that dumb insolence with me. I was a sergeant longer than you were. Whiskey. You're talking about that letter I wrote to you? I am indeed. Never read such garbled nonsense in my life. What the devil's got into you? Just didn't fancy your job, sir. You're lying. Cheers. Cheers. You're right, I'm lying. Wasn't the money good enough for you? I can put it up a bit. For God's sake, I'm... I'm sorry, sir. I owed somebody a debt turning you down was the only way I could pay it. Oh. Crossed in love, were we? <laughs> You're a smart one, all right. So are you. That's why I want you. There's a big property deal coming up around here quite soon. You could help me. No. Still talking like a fool. Wait till you hear what the deal is. On second thoughts, I think I'll leave it till you're feeling a little more rational. Perhaps when you've sorted out this trouble with your fiancé. She's not my fiancé anymore. I married somebody else. Have to. That's right. And are you going to tell this one you turned me down? No fear. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Any idea who he was with? No, sir. Seems an odd acquaintance for a man like Ford. He's on his way up, sir. Right, I'll see him straight away. Bring him in. Then keep out of sight for a while. I think I'd better move you somewhere else tomorrow. I think you had, sir. This is Sergeant Ford, sir. At ease, Sergeant. I am at ease, and I'm not too sure I'm a sergeant. I see. Hepburn tells me you had a bit of trouble, is that it? He was a mate of mine. And you stick by your mates? That's right. Do you have any mates in Ireland? No. Any political ideas about Ireland? If we're going to get anywhere, you'll have to call me sir. I'm listening, sir. I need a man who can interrogate prisoners. A man with a nose for the truth. I've been in touch with the war office. They tell me you were seconded to intelligence in my man's. Yes, sir. I should imagine that was pretty rough. They didn't serve no cucumber sandwiches, sir. <laughs> Used violence, did you? No, sir. Oh, come, come, Ford, we're alone. Didn't have to, sir. Sooner or later, they always told me the truth. Use violence and truth is the last thing you get. You're no fool, Ford. Thank you, sir. I couldn't use a fool. Who could you use, sir? A man like you. There are no non-commissioned ranks in the black and tans. Auxiliary police, I should say. But I can arrange it so that you will have the authority, pay and allowances of a warrant officer class two with special responsibility for interrogating political prisoners. His business would be to find out their contacts and hiding places, weapon stores and so on. He would not necessarily be involved in more active operations unless he so chose. You don't want much, do you, sir? I want you and half a dozen like you. Now, I can get all the thugs and prize fighters I need, but I don't want brawn, I want brains. Brains as good as those damned Irishmen's. Your kind of brain, Ford. Warrant officer class two, Ford, with promotion to class one in six months if you deliver the goods. And I'm sure you will. I would have those two working with me. Hepburn and Bartram. You can have Bartram if you think you need him. Not Hepburn. I see, sir. It all wants a bit of thinking about. Does it? 
I should have thought it was the best offer you've had in years. I'd like to talk it over with my wife, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, Hepburn tells me that you're married to the sister of a man called Headley. And there'd be a place for him, too. He and a man called Stobbs. If you can persuade him to join the party, I gather you used to be quite a team. Aye, we were. Three of us and another fella. I'd like to think it over, sir. Can I let you know tomorrow? I'll be here till six o'clock. After that, I'm afraid it'll be too late, Ford. That's all. Uh, don't forget your book. Slavery, Ford. Is that what interests you? We weren't all slaves, sir. Some of them were owners. And he asked for me and all? You and Charlie Stubbs. But how on earth would he find out? It happened. And he telephoned the war office, get to know about your discharge. You did all right in the army, Matt. And we worked with you. That's right. Three pound ten a week, wait till I tell Charlie. <laughs> How much would you get, Jack? Four pounds four, maybe it's a bit more. Sergeant. Warrant officer class two, unofficial like. You've come up in the world. <laughs> what was sign on? There you are, and we've got till tomorrow night at six. Where? Station hotel. Would Sid Hepburn be there and all? All right. Oh, well, I'll come up in the world. Yeah, Jack, I think it's marvellous. I bet even headmasters don't make four guineas a week. They don't get shot, neither. Just a minute, Jack. Aye. They only asked for three of us, not four. Paddy Boyle wasn't invited. Too bad, isn't it? Because Paddy Boyle's the enemy, Matt, a bloody mick. Oh, come on, Jack. He was with us right through. I didn't stop Barton from thumping him tonight. What? He was following us, doing a recce. I don't believe it. I do. I was there. Following what for? I don't know, and I don't want to know. But I saw Barton clobber him tonight, and he would have booted him if I hadn't stopped him. I'm not on Paddy's side, Matt, but I'm not fighting against him either. I can stuff that job. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll go to bed. I'm a bit whacked. Good night, Matt. Good night, Matt. What's so special about this Paddy Boyle? Oh, he's a good marrow. He wants to be. He's costing four guineas a week. He helped pay for mum and dad not so long ago. And sheep stealing. Right. Ah, but even so, Matt. I mean, I'm four months gone. And there hasn't been a job around here for weeks, any kind of job. It's not as if Paddy Boyle was in Ireland now. Miniscule Fusiliers, the Munster Regiment, the Connaught Rangers, the Royal in Ireland, even France and all. Is that awful war? Aye, that's right. The war. One time we were in the trenches. And Jerry threw a stick bomb. And Paddy grabbed it and hoied it right back. It exploded right on top of the parapet. Covered in mud, Paddy was, and very near blinded. If he hadn't hoied that bomb, we'd have all been dead. And the man right next to him was Sid Hepburn. I'm off out. No, are you waiting to see Charlie Stubbs? No, I think I'll go and see how Paddy Boyle was getting on. Morning, Paddy. Morning, Jack. Sorry about your bit of trouble. Are you, Jack? Aye, I am. I think this is yours. Aye. Aye, it is. Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. I'll be seeing you, Paddy. Just a minute. Where did you get that medal? In the back lane where he dropped it. Dropped it? You know what your friends did to that man. Aye, I was there, but they're not my friends. You're not going to join them? Would I be here if I was? That's a kind of an Irish answer. If I was here on business, I wouldn't be alone. The hard man, is it? Hard enough. Is that right? You know where they are, then. Bartram and Hepburn. And their boss, too, maybe. You know where they are. Right. Then you'll tell me. You'll tell me. No. Then we'll have to make you. No! Oh. No! Now, we don't need this. Now, lay off him, Michael. He's a friend of mine. It's a rich man you are, Paddy Boyle. You can still afford friends. Out, you. Take care of yourself, Paddy. And you, Jack. I always do, don't you remember? Not at all. Why, my house is in a mess. I didn't want to go back there anyway. You're very welcome, Tom. I thought it all went off lovely. Minister has such beautiful words. It's a pity our Billy couldn't be here. 
He's got work to do, ma'am. He'll be thinking of her. Oh, I'll do soon. I'll wait before I forget. That's for our Tommy's keep. Where in the world did you get all that? It's my savings, ma'am. My life savings. How in the world did you ever manage to save? Horses, whippets, pitch and toss. It all mounts up, Jesse. Hey, did you see Jack on the way to the cemetery? Aye. Why, I'm glad he was here to see Mary go. How do you mean? Of course he's here. It won't be for long. I was talking to Matt Headley yesterday. He tells me Jack's joining the Black and Tans. What? Aye. Twelve bob a day, so Matt says. Hey, it fair beats me. Twelve bob a day. He said Jack was joining. Well, they've been talking it over. Jack's wife was all for it. He can't. It's his life, Jesse. Always one for a scrap was Jack. Not that lot, they're murderers. Oh, come now, Jesse. Defenders of law and order. They can hardly use kid gloves now, can they? Anything that hurts, that's what they use. But Jack's not like that. He's not. Where might you be off to? I'm sorry, Arthur. I've got to go and see Jack Ford. You have. There's nothing you? between us now. You know there isn't. But I can't let him chuck his life away like that. Jesse! Would you like me to come with you? Thanks, Arthur, but no. I'll do better on my own. But thanks. You meant it, didn't you? I'll go with her, I mean. Certainly. Ah, you're a queer sort of fella. I'm going to tell you something. I could do with a few more queer fellas like you round these parts. I'll trouble you for another drink, Arthur, lad. But we know where they'll be. Matt told us. No harm in making sure. Not by hammering Jack. He's a mate of mine. He's the best mate a man could ask for. Anyway, I am sure. You'll go there with me, then? Aye. Aye, I'll go. Now, you're scared, Paddy? Aye. I am. I'm scared in the war and all. And you? Terrified. You went there? That's right. But why, Jack? I picked up Paddy's medal on the way home. There's only right to get it back. But you might have been killed. Not me. I'm not joining them. No, me. Did you see Charlie Stobbs? Oh, well, what he's never had, he'll never miss. Poor Sid Edmund. And what he's getting? Scared, said he's terrified. From what his CO told me, he was after a swap. What do you mean? If you and me went in, he got his discharge. At least I think it was that. Why, the rotten... Ah, he was scared, Matt. And I wouldn't blame him. But after I saw Paddy's mates this morning... I went out to see him last night, and he had a hard one with him. You went to see Paddy, boy? Aye, last night. Like I said, he had an Irish fellow with him. Lynch, his name was. Have a few drinks, did you? Lynch had a bottle. What are you after? The thing I heard today, the sort of thing you learn about in intelligence. They were going to belt us at their club to find out where Sid Hepburn and his mate were staying. Only Paddy speaks up for me. We don't need that, he says. Now, why wouldn't they need that, Matt? Because you'd already told them, hadn't you? Well, of course not. Hadn't you? Well, Mike, that was an awful lot to drink, now, Jack. you daft bloody fool. Some people won't take no for an answer. What is Jesse? I'm sorry for disturbing you. You're not disturbing us. Put the kettle on, Dolly. No, no, please. I just want to ask, is it true? Is what true? That you're joining the Black and Tans. You think I should? You mustn't. I'm not allowed to do anything, am I? I can't join the boss class and I can't bash the Irish either, is that it? No worry, I'm not going to join that lot. My wars is over. Ah, the Jack. Anyway, I'm glad. Sorry for disturbing you, Mrs Ford. You're very welcome, I'm sure. I'll let myself out. You're really not joining. Cross me heart and hope. That's all right, then. It would have destroyed you, Jack. Of all the nerves! Just belt up, will you? Belt up? If you think I'm gonna have your fancy woman coming around here. We've got 40 years left to have row, as I said, belt up. Six o'clock, he said, no later than six. I suppose you told him that and all, how are you? Well, good, Jack. station, you bloody fool. Where else? Get away out of this. Behind you, buddy man, behind you! Mons and wipers. Come right in the sum. The poor bugger had to buy the bloody railway station. Well, at least Sid Hepburn got his discharge. Pretty poor Paddy had to get his and all. Mommy sing. 
Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the haddock when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the bloater when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the mackerel when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the salmon when the boat comes in. <laughs>